Welcome back to Ox Tools. I'm Tom. So uh, we're back in the shop and we got a big load of meatloaf for you. Um, so we're going to take another try at the friction stir welding and I think you're going to be real happy with the results. Um, we got that going pretty nicely. Um, we got a uh, participant in the five block challenge. So we're going to measure some um, precision to ground blocks. Uh, and this is a method for evaluating surface grinder chucks and surface grinder uh, geometry. Um, we got some level action. And you guys know I have a soft spot for levels, so uh, we got a couple levels to show. And uh, got a, uh, a gift from a fellow YouTuber, uh, two YouTubers, and uh, they sent me a nice, uh, uh, a nice gift that we're going to check out. Um, oh, we're going to talk about the Pratt & Whitney uh, end measures again. Uh, a couple of new tools and a mystery tool and uh, let's get cracking. <laughs> so that'll be good. Alright, so this next one, um, so this is a reprint of a Pratt & Whitney jig bore uh, brochure. And um, this, is, this is a pretty cool picture. I love their logo. The logo is pretty good. And this is a uh, actually a very large Pratt & Whitney, probably a number four is my guess looking at that one, um, jig bore. Now jig bores are used to per, for precision location of holes typically, that's their, their, their main function. Um, the reason I'm showing this, uh, this was sent in by uh, uh, a guy that I communicate with off and on. Uh, his name's Kurt uh, Sirens and he has a Lindley jig bore and um, he's a machine collector of some sorts. Anyway, uh, he saw the, uh, the meatloaf uh, episode about uh, these, these end measures that were sent in by uh, Michael Bielak. Okay, so these, um, these are for, actually we're going to see here in a sec how you set distances with, uh, with these end measures. So Michael Bielak, actually these belong to his dad, Tom Bielak. And um, he sent these into the show and uh, and wanted me to have them. So uh, here we here we are. So let's uh, set those aside for a sec. And then um, so Kurt saw that and he said, Oh well, here's you know because I've never I've never run a Pratt and Whitney jig bore and I've never used the end measure system. And um, so he said, Oh well, it shows shows how they use it in there. So let's uh, let's pop over and uh, and see that. Okay. So here's the end measures. You can see those, and um, so and I don't. You know, this is probably going to be a little bit tough to see. There's a dial indicator right here that you pick up your first hole or your first location uh, on the drawing or whatever, an edge or whatever it is, and then you zero this indicator. So, um, and then what you do is you move to your um, and. So there's a little end stop here. So what I imagine you do is uh, you uh, you move to your first your zero point and you zero the indicator on the little stop. Then you move to your first hole or your first position and you put these end measures in. Okay, and um, you make up you make up the length that you want. That's a precision distance from that zero point. Um, to you know wherever that hole location is, okay, and then you uh, you zero the indi you know the indicator reads zero when you're at the right spot. So the the beauty of this system is that you can have you know basically inaccurate lead screws, okay, and backlash and whatever, right? Um, so this is actually measuring the table position very very precisely, right? And these. Uh, indicators actually have veneers on them that uh, uh, so you can read tenths on them so you can you know theoretically position within a tenth and it even says that in here so let's see I think there's more here let's take a look here so yeah there you can see the set a little bit better oh okay here we can see the indicators okay so there's Y there's X um, there's probably well there might be one on the Z I don't know um, not sure on this but there's the there's the end measure set up in there, and you stack those up for whatever whatever position that you want. So anyway, Pratt and Whitney kind of pioneered that system. Um, Moore um, didn't like that system, so what they did is instead is they made very very accurate lead screws. Um, 
And honestly, uh, if you have the manufacturing capability to make really good lead screws, uh, it's going to be faster than this system, hands down. So, uh, um, but <laughs> it's a lot harder to make lead screws that uh, that have those kind of um, um, really tiny lead errors. Okay. Anyway, so Kurt, thank you very much uh, for sending that in. That's great. I love this uh, this brochure. And uh, Michael, um, thanks for sending in the uh, the end measures. And uh, that was a pretty cool little uh, kind of uh, machine history thing there. So thanks, guys. All right. So this is the new the new tool here. Um, so people that watch the channel, they know I have a soft spot for uh, for levels. Um, there's something neat about levels is, uh, you know, they're such a simple device and they're self-proving and they have everything right about them, um, about an instrument, right? They're self-proving and they're, uh, they can be extremely sensitive uh, and they're just kind of pleasing to look at, okay? Anyway, uh, this is a, a type of level that I've been kind of poking around for um, and uh, Anyway, I found one on eBay and um, eh, I bid pretty hard on it. And um, anyway, I ended up getting it. And this is a, um, it's in pretty good condition. So let's, uh, let's take a peek at it here. I'm pretty happy with the, uh, with the purchase. Now, the case was a little rough. I had to do a little bit of work on the case. I added some, uh, some new hinges and, uh, and whatnot because the case was, uh, was, uh, was pretty bad. In fact, when I saw the case, I was like, uh-oh. What's what's going to be inside that? And uh, anyway, here's what was inside. So, and we'll get a closer look at that. So that is a a Fell uh, F E L L precision level. Okay, and this is accurate to less than 10 arc seconds. And uh, we'll look at it a little closer. So instead of purple velvet, we've got uh, blue velvet in this one. So the box did its job and it protected the instrument uh, perfectly. Uh, the, like I said, the outside was pretty. It got wet or something. And uh, somehow this thing uh, survived. So let's uh, let's take a closer look at it. All right. So there's a close-up of the the fell level. Um, I'm going to try to centralize the bubble here uh, a little bit so you can kind of get a get an idea. And this thing's pretty sensitive, so I got to really be careful here. So I'm just barely leaning on the uh, on the case. It's like I can't talk and do it, right? Okay, there it goes. Anyway, you can see it's a perfectly round bubble and it levels in all directions at once. And uh, so this technology of this particular level uh, predates World War II. And this was actually um, considered classified technology. They didn't want uh, uh, these manufacturing methods for making these vials uh, to fall into the hands of the enemy. So um, uh, at least that's the story that I've heard anyway. So it's kind of a kind of a neat uh, neat story. So what's cool about this is uh, you can once you set it up on the machine, you know whatever you're leveling or whatever you just leave it. You don't have to swap directions or do anything weird like that. So uh, and then here's the. Here's the bottom. So the bottom is grooved to uh, so dirt doesn't uh, get under uh, between the measuring surface and the uh, and whatever you're measuring. So um, it tends to ch go into the channels. So let's uh, um, let's take a peek. Let's take the lid off of this thing. It's got a little cover here that's made out of phenolic. Yeah. Okay. There we go. All right. And there's the inside of it, um, and it, so to to uh, calibrate this thing, it's very similar to calibrating a, a quote unquote normal level, where you swap it uh, end for end. But in this case, you draw uh, you draw a, a box around this thing, and you rotate it 180 degrees, and then uh, what you know what you're looking for is the exact same. Um, uh, offset in uh, both cases when you swap the ends. So it has these little, you know, I kind of call them concentric adjusters. Uh, this black screw down there locks it to the frame, and then the silver screw uh, adjusts the the vial relative to the body, okay? Uh, and a three-point deal there, obviously, right? So, um, yeah, nice glass cover. It's all sealed up. And uh, I can't quite read that. 
what was going on there. I don't know, maybe that's just the, the inspector's num, uh, calibration or something like that. Anyway, things in great shape. The case did its job. And um, um, anyway, I'm very happy I have this. And uh, um, so a guy on Instagram uh, kind of started showing these. Uh, he uses them in his work uh, doing machinery setup. And uh, uh, so I started doing a little research on them. And uh, Decided I needed one for the uh, for the level the level collection. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed that. And uh, it's a fell uh, all way level. Um, very cool, Rockford, Illinois, made in the USA. Okay, speaking of levels, guess what? We got another level here. Now this is a level that I already had, and uh, so the story here is a, a viewer contacted me, and um, he's a um, he does woodwork uh, as a hobby and he wanted to do something for me and uh, he offered to make um, a wood box for my level and I said geez that would be really nice right and um, now it's funny because uh, I don't know how to do this politely but some a couple of other folks um, had offered to make a level box for me okay and uh, now I don't want to sound like a uh, like I'm ungrateful or anything like that, but uh, uh, they insisted uh, that they wanted to do this. So I went and measured the level, and I made a little drawing, and I and I emailed it to them, and that was the end of it. And uh, so anyway, this gentleman here, Mike Strawfer, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, yeah, Strawfer, uh, Columbus, Ohio. Um, I sent him the same sketch I sent the other guys, and anyway, he made a box and he sent it to me. Okay, and he even lined it with uh, with purple velvet because uh, he remembered a meatloaf where I showed a sign bar, a Taft Pierce sign bar that had uh, purple velvet in the, inside the case. Uh, this is my level, and this is the level that I measured up. Um, it's a Starrett uh, 98. Uh, actually, I think I traded Adam Booth this level for. Uh, something he wanted. I don't remember what it was now. Um, anyway, so now it didn't have a box. Well, guess what? Now it's got a box. Mike, thank you very much. And um, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, something handmade is always very special. And, um, you know, you get an A for effort and, uh, and follow through. Okay, buddy? So uh, I totally appreciate it. And uh, this level now has a, uh, has a nice home here. And uh, it will reside in there. Uh, and I'll... He even made a little template here so that he could, uh, from my drawing, he made a template and um, so that he could make the cutout in the box. So uh, I'm just going to leave that template in there because that's, that's part of this level's uh, story now. Okay? So, all right. Anyway, Mike, thank you very much. That was a, that's an awesome gift. Okay, so this next one here, this is pretty cool. This comes to us from Paris, France. Um, Thomas uh, Lazan. He contacted me, and Thomas uh, used to work in the, or still works in the videotape industry, or uh, I don't know, what is it, uh, recorders and uh, magnetic tape industry. So uh, he thought I would uh, enjoy this, and he was absolutely right. Let's open it up. It's a cool indicator. I've never seen one quite like this. So... Let's see, is it, uh, oh, it's made by the um, Oba Instrument Works, okay, and um, it's a one micron uh, division, okay, and what's interesting about this is, is the direction that this one works, and it's, I guess this particular one is used for setting the reed heads on uh, magnetic tape readers and things like that, which actually have to be set really accurately, okay. So, so this reads a kind of a high-low situation. So you probably zero it and then uh, um, and then run back and forth across the read head, or I, I'm not sure what how it's actually used. Um, but also, it has a uh, <clears throat> kind of a fine adjust over here that's built into it. That's kind of clever. Um, it's real simple. It's just on a little dovetail. Okay, and it's just got a little screw and a little preload uh, spring so that it slides nicely. Then um, I imagine that uh, when you tighten that screw, it locks it all down real nice. Now this is kind of cool. Um, so if you look at the scale, so we have individual um, thousands of a millimeter here, right? Uh, up to 
um, 20. And then they say, hey, if you're beyond that, you don't care about the little num the little divisions, right? So they just kind of open it up. And when he first sent me a picture of it, or I first saw it, I thought that it was some kind of proportional thing, but it's not. So the, the spaces are all the same. Um, so it's not some kind of proportional thing. But like I said, the interesting part is the the direction that it uh, that it works in here. Okay, so you see that. So it's some little flexure in there. I'd love to take it apart, but I I don't I don't want to uh, bozo it up um, just to see the guts of it. Okay. Anyway, a uh, very nice indicator, Thomas. Thank you so much for sending that in. That's a pretty cool uh, pretty cool little tool, and uh, we'll see if we can uh, find a use for that. Uh, you know that orientation is uh, is very unique so uh, we'll, we'll see if we can figure out a, a place to use that so thank you sir okay so here's the mystery tool there it is so it's some I don't know some kind of stippler or puncture or something uh, maybe it's a um, um, a condom flattener or something like that. I don't know. Um, I found this thing actually. It was outside, and uh, um, anyway, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it caught my attention. Uh, it's one of my secret uh, dumpster diving uh, locations um, that's down the street from here. Anyway, uh, I saw this and picked it up and promptly stabbed myself with it. And uh, but uh, it was interesting enough to bring home and. Uh, now, uh, now, I didn't bother to poke around in the web to see what it was or whatever, so I figured it'd be more fun to show it on camera and have you guys uh, <laughs> do that work. <laughs> anyway, so if anybody knows what that is, uh, first person to get it right, uh, I'll mail you a uh, couple of Ox Tool stickers, okay? So first person in the comments to... Okay, so here's the rules. Uh, first person in the comments to provide... A working link to what this is okay not a guess a working link to what this is okay um, anyway you get some ox tool swag all right all right this next one's pretty cool so this comes to us uh, all the way from Canada um, and this is from uh, Pierre Baudry and Philippe uh, Desardins I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering his name so we'll just uh, we'll call him Phil <laughs> Uh, his full name's Philippe, but um, it's, it's going to be Phil's projects. <laughs> um, anyway, these guys uh, um, took on a project here where they made I don't know thirty of these thirty or of these hammers. Um, a couple of them went to uh, Keith Fenner uh, for his toolbox giveaway, which is really cool. And then a, uh, a select few uh, uh, fellow YouTubers uh, ended up with them um, as well. And uh, I'm, I was lucky enough to, to get one. So it's a beautiful hammer. It's very nicely made. Uh, nice wood, uh, nice attention to detail. Uh, fit and finish is, is pretty sweet. Now, you know, normally this would be a uh, uh, kind of a display hammer. It's so nice, right? Um, but uh, Pierre insists that it's not a toolbox queen and it's to be used, okay? Um, so uh, he really, really wants me to uh, to hit something with it. So, <laughs> so we got to figure out something to hit. Uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll find something to smack here and uh, give it a go. Um, they even made you know an extra set of faces here in a uh, in a little uh, a little holder that it looks like the surface ground uh, or belt sand. Eh, I don't know, that looks like surface grinding to me. Um, the uh, the backside to uh, to make it really nice. So uh, uh, Phil and Pierre, thank you very much. This is pretty awesome. So let's go find something to to smack with this uh, this uh, really nice hammer. Okay, this next one is uh, literally a pallet of stuff. I didn't say how big of a pallet. <laughs> um, this comes to us from uh, uh, David Alley. And uh, he runs uh, a little company called uh, For Safety uh, LLC, and they're in where are they? Michigan, right? Marquette, Marquette, uh, Michigan. And it's interesting because I actually bought a book uh, that these guys um, actually I don't know if they wrote it or. 
they also sell it on their website. I'm not sure quite what the deal is, but I bought a book and it's a little uh, rigging handbook. Uh, tells about uh, how to rig loads and uh, how to turn things over and stuff like that. Anyway, these guys sell that book and it's a good little book actually. Uh, it's going to become part of my uh, training um, um, regimen for uh, new technicians. So uh, anyway, uh, they do all kinds of stuff, uh, lotto, uh, rigging, scaffolding. Um, so they have these demonstration kits uh, that you can train folks with. So uh, anyway, pretty cool stuff. I put a link in the description so you can go check them out. Um, anyway, David had a bunch of stuff and he wanted to send it into the show and uh, so he did. So, and it was literally, it was strapped to this pallet, which was pretty cool. So um, this is a, a little Manfrotto uh, clamp and uh, which is, you know, they make uh, photography equipment. Uh, I believe this one, you know, you can put it on a, a thing like this or you can put it on a stand or whatever and you can hold uh, cards or uh, reflectors or things like that. And it's got these little rubber chinguses on here so you don't mark up the, the business there. Anyway, it's a nice little clamp actually and uh, it's got a way to attach it to something else. So uh, we'll make use of that. Um, and then this is a, also a Manfrotto clamp here too and I have one like this that I use on the lathe to support the camera and it has a an arm that comes off of it. I don't know if you guys have seen it in the, the other videos but it's like a, a very large Noga arm um, but this is the universal clamp and it'll clamp on the edge of a table or on a round bar it's kinda um, like I said a universal clamp so David thank you very much those are those are great things um, this is a uh, two uh, mass for a, um, a surface gauge. Um, so you can have a, a short rod or a really, really long rod too. So um, I think it's not marked. Uh, this, it's possible that this is, uh, this is homemade. I'm not sure though. So uh, anyway, that's cool. It's always good to have a extra mast for your, uh, your surface gauge. And we got a, a, a box full of love here. There's all kinds of neat stuff in here. Oh yeah, that's what I was going to show. Let me, uh, let me go grab the, uh, uh, the thing that fits these so uh, then we can look at that. And here's a, uh, a curved bearing scraper too that's uh, nice and sharp. So let me, let me grab this tool and we'll take a look at that. All right, so this is a, um, a Starrett number 85. And what this is is it's kind of a combination dividers, calipers, inside outside calipers um, and uh, so it's actually a nice tool. Now this is something that I made that holds a sharpie here um, so we'll pull that out and we'll pull the divider point out but what you can do is you can make a set of calipers uh, with some accessories here okay so if you want one tool in your box and uh, oops, oh, that won't work, will it? Anyway, you get the idea. Um, so you got uh, outside calipers and then you can switch over or just switch one leg and go to uh, something that's like a hermaphrodite or you actually this one would normally be used like that. Okay. All right. Well, I could see that situation too where you wanted to do something like that. All right and then measure that uh, that distance. Anyway, uh, I happen to have a set of these and David sent along these uh, uh, accessory uh, um, legs, which uh, makes it even more useful. And there's another another divider point too. So David, thank you very much. Uh, some cool stuff. All right, so this next one here, what we have is we have uh, uh, another participant here uh, in the five block challenge and uh, just to remind folks what that's about is uh, when you grind uh, your chuck on your surface grinder um, you're trying to make it as parallel to the uh, the ways as you possibly can right so one way to check that is by uh, placing five blocks on the you know spaced out on the chuck um, you know, in a pattern uh, similar to that, okay? And then you grind, you very lightly grind uh, all of five uh, 
um, blocks and then you check their thickness. And if they're all dead nuts the same, then uh, you're in really good shape. Uh, closer the better. Uh, now, this isn't, uh, um, you know, the ultimate definitive test of the performance of a surface grinder, but uh, it's just one of, uh, of several. Now, uh, this gentleman is um, uh, Spencer Webb, okay, and Spencer Webb owns a company called uh, Antenna Systems and uh, he's back in uh, New Hampshire, Wyndham, New Hampshire, and he um, raised his hand and said that he wanted to play the game here, so uh, he ground uh, uh, these blocks. Uh, he also produced a little video, and there's a link in the description. Um, check him out, uh, uh, check out his video of him grinding these, these very blocks here. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to check them um, to see if, we're not going to check them for ultimate thickness. We're going to check them for differences between each block. That's what we're looking for here. Okay, and it uh, looks like we can see the uh, we can see the instrument here, uh, the measuring instrument. So let me get this set up uh, and zero it up, and then uh, we'll check some uh, we'll check some blocks here. Hmm. Let's turn this on. So let's just get a basic zero going here. Get my big arm out of the way there. So I, I'm on the the lowest res or the lowest resolution. Yeah, lowest resolution. All right, let's get that zeroed. All right, so we're zeroed up. All right. So what I want to do is these have been sitting here for a while. I just want to I just want to clean them because they've been sitting here uncovered for a little bit. So let me just do a quick clean on, on all these here. Two, three. And this is just a little bit of denatured alcohol. Four. Why am I cleaning them in order? I don't know. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I don't know, it's just, <laughs> about that myself and it makes no sense okay so let's just do we're gonna do a uh, just a rough check first and see where we are here and in this situation I'm not too worried about heat from my hand at this resolution so this is 1000s total range so each one of those lines is what uh, so that's that one that's half a thou um, and so what are those? Uh, uh, 50 millions? Yeah, okay. So those are 50 millionths uh, divisions there, okay? All right, let's look at number two. All right, so there's a little... little variation there. Let's check our index. So that's 50 millionths low there, I think, is what I'm seeing. All right, so it looks like, you know, this is a pretty common problem is that they vary in thickness uh, uh, across the uh, the sample too. So, uh, okay, let's keep going here. That's pretty good. That one's a little thick. And this is all compared to number one, okay? So just remember that. Okay. That one's a little low, it looks like. Yeah, all right, let's go back through those again. Yeah, so I should probably... I'm gonna rotate this. Yeah, okay, so as we rotate it, we see a variation there. Okay. All right. So there's there's must be about where I zeroed it here. I'm just gonna put a little a little dot. 
kind of defines that spot that I uh, that I zeroed it at. Okay. Don't drive on the Sharpie mark, right? We know that has some thickness. <laughs> All right. Zero. Plus 50 millionths. Oops. Like I said, I'm just going to mark the spot where I'm checking it. That way I can go back through a couple of times and uh, be assured. Okay, now that one seems real thick there. So that's a tenth, a little more than a tenth. about a tenth yep a tenth all right let's see number five I'm, I'm just going to check these in one spot okay that's looks like 50 million there he's got a really nice finish on these now, uh, this is also as a reminder, I had each guy uh, fill out a sheet here as to their uh, the parameters that they used. This was done on a Herrig 612 manual machine, V-Way. Um, he's got his uh, abrasive, um, it was a uh, 46 grit H hardness, uh, his wheel dress details, um, got cool mist, blah, 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 rough, depth of cut roughing. So anyway, we're collecting some data on this too to see, uh, uh, you know, because we're look we're also looking at finishes too. So, you know, feature feature size is also related to surface finishes. So, uh, okay, all right. So Spencer, it looks like you did real good here. Um, I think the uh, the largest deviation that we saw was uh, about uh, I think it was was it number four. I don't remember now. Number four. Yeah, a little over a tenth on that, 1.2 tenths or something like that, um, uh, thick on number four here. Um, now he sent some dimensions. I'm going to compare it to uh, um, my readings here and just see. Uh, but it looks like, uh, um, you know, these are all like within one and a half tenths of one another, so uh, which is pretty cool. So you have to appreciate how small these numbers are, guys. And uh, th this is tiny, tiny amounts. It's, it's actually even difficult to read repeatedly to a tenth with a micrometer that's calibrated uh, or that has uh, those divisions on it, okay? So uh, it's, it's fussy stuff, okay? All right. All right. So that's fun. Fun stuff. Spencer, uh, thanks for playing along. I uh, appreciate you participating. This is great. And um, I also have the next uh, uh, name of the person that wants to try this. So these blocks here, uh, we're going to pack them up and we're going to mail them off to the next uh, participant. And then uh, we'll get those blocks back and we'll check them again. So, so far right now, um, Alex Kern uh, out in Pennsylvania has the... Uh, um, well, his grinder's in the best shape, I guess, is uh, what we should say. Also, Alex is a pretty good, uh, he's a pretty good grinder hand. And um, um, I think we checked his blocks, and uh, they were in the 20 millionths range uh, of uh, all being the same. So, uh, so Spencer, hey, we appreciate it. And uh, uh, blocks look great. And um, I send him some, uh, some stickers and some goodies, too. So, uh, um, anyway, Spencer, thank you.
one actually looks pretty good. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Sweet. Getting hot. Come on, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Looking good. The uh, trailing edge is excellent. Yeah, once he gets going, it seems to be pretty good. But the forces are high. That's certainly true. Little chips coming off. So I think there's variations in the uh, in the Z height here that uh, are making themselves shown. But uh, let's see if we can make it to the end here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hole. Check it out. All right, so there's the results. Okay, so it's warm. You know, it's not blazing hot, but it's warm. This finish actually looks pretty good. The tool gets very hot, so uh, that's one uh, interesting phenomenon. So it looks like your Z height has to be very, very parallel with the machine travel. The start was a little a little weird but it got going right away so let's let's pop it loose and let's take a look at the other side yeah okay let's see so I had to uh, reef on these pretty good here uh, you saw that first uh, the first go um, oh creak something's creaking I wonder what that is oh I I bet you that since I have this clamped, um, it's um, it got hot, so it bowed. So maybe uh, um, I don't know, maybe that isn't a good idea. Uh, Rolo Tomasi, the guy that sent me this stuff, uh, um, mentioned that uh, if you want to do a full penetration weld, to put something underneath it, or else it'll stick to the stick to your substrate, kind of like. That. <laughs> All right, well, that's not injured, but it was stuck to that. Oop, let's turn it the way it was. So there it is. Let's look at the back. That is a pretty freaking good weld. Look at that. Jeez, look at that. That's pretty amazing. That is perfectly flush. There's no, there's just the tiniest little edge I can get my hand on. I would call that a success. So yeah, once you once you have it tilted the right way, it looks like it's uh, it's doable. Um, I don't know, butt welds are, are probably reasonably straightforward. Uh, anything else, uh, I don't know how to do it. But uh, wow, that's pretty good. Well, should we try it again? I got some more material. Let's try it again. So that's about a half a thou, so I'm not going to worry about that. If you can't tolerate that, then I'm uh, not very pleased, so. <laughs> All right, let's get it going here. I scraped off the spooge that was on uh, left over from the other one, so let me get another one going. Okay, I'm setting the depth here. Um, if you do the trig, one degree across that distance is a little over 6,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let me back it off here and come back at it. Is this paper's I don't know four thousandths or something like that, three and a half. I'm just going to snag the paper I think on this side, right there. Okay, just got it. A little more. Okay, and maybe a little more. Okay, so it's just it's just grabbing the paper there. So that sh should set the trailing edge down below the top surface just a little bit, which is what you want. Um, and we're gonna try that. So, all right, 
All right, let me reset the camera. Well, you know what? That's actually not a bad shot. Yeah, that's not a bad shot. Let's go for that. All right. You guys ready? Check my uh, feed rate here. I'm gonna try the slightly faster feed. Feed rate, okay. Okay, cross your fingers, here we go. Dun 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 dun. Whoa. Trailing edge looks like doo-doo. Let me go in a little deeper. There we go. So I increase the depth a little bit. And it's better. Better, better, okay. And not great, but okay, well not as good as the first one. <laughs> okay, so I got another one set up here. So I've kind of gone back to my original parameters um, for that first one. So let's see if we can duplicate what I did. <laughs> So I'm all clamped down, uh, depth is set, uh, RPM set, and feed rate is set. So, I don't know. Um, I polished the tool, uh, you know, it had heat marks in it, and I used a little, little bit of scotch Brite to just kind of polish it up and get any, uh, any um, chingon airs off of it or anything. So let's, uh, let's go for it here. All right, three, two, one. Go. Yeah, okay. It looks so, so those parameters certainly work better because it looks like we got kind of what we had the first go here. Can you see? Yeah, okay. You can see behind there. It's looking pretty good back in there. And there's a little smoke coming off of it because things are getting warm. Well, it looks good though. The start's kind of funny, it gets a little rough, but uh, all right, well, it works. Hey, if you can do it twice, that means you, uh, what, you're a professional, right? <laughs> uh oh. Oh, no. Some things making noise here. Alright. That's it. Drop out of there. Now you can see that tool's discolored because it gets hot. Now this is okay. This is warm but uh, not not blazing hot. I mean, this is no worse than an end mill, right? I mean, you, people smoke end mills down all the time. All right. Well, it looks good. Let's cool it off and uh, let it cool off, and then we'll take a closer look at them. All right. So here's the here's the tool, and you can see the discoloration there. There's the little uh, the pin on the bottom. So that surface still looks pretty good. Um, so I think this thing's still okay. Um, here's the first weld. Now, this one was the one that slipped initially, and then uh, we got it going uh, uh, properly after that. And this section of the weld looks pretty good. Now, it looks like it, it dug in just slightly on this, so there's a little little fuzzy edge there. And then let's take a look at the back. The back look is what's really impressive here. I mean, like I said, that's perfectly flush, and there's, there's no real ridge or anything that you can... There's a little something there that you can get your hand on, but uh, look at that thing. It's uh, it's full, basically fully fused together or stirred together or whatever you call it. 
Okay, so now this one, this is where uh, Mr. Wizard played with the parameters a little bit. <laughs> and you can see the uh, dog meat uh, um, results of that. Although, uh, uh, interestingly enough, you can see that there's full, full pen there too. Okay, and then here's number three. This one's looking pretty good too. So I don't know quite what's going on at the start here. We have, there's some start phenomenon, you know, on all of these, uh, this, you know what, let's just get that one out of there. <laughs> um, there's some start phenomena here where it, I don't know, has to get going or I don't, I don't know exactly what. I mean, the backside looks pretty good, right? Uh, on both of them. So I don't know, I mean, uh, it's kind of interesting, uh, you know, Yes, it's uh, it's an interesting technique. Uh, I see it working great for butt welds, but uh, so you want to make a tank, okay? So great, you can weld this weld the seams. Now what? Uh, you know, how do you put the ends on? Uh, do you have to use formed heads? Um, you know, and then uh, do circ circumferential welds or whatever that are also butt welds. So I'm not sure how to apply the you know, or the design uh, intent, you know, with friction stir welding. So it seems to be fine for butt welds. And I haven't done a lot of, I haven't done a lot of reading on it at all. Okay. So just to be honest, uh, full disclosure there. So, okay. So it looks like it works. So, um, by the way, you guys, you know, you can turn high speed in your lathe uh, with carbide tooling. So if you want to try this uh, and fiddle around with it, and uh, uh, you can probably make your own tool. Uh, surface finish is important, so polish it up when you're done. Anyway, thumbs up and Rolla Tomasi, thanks for the tool and thanks for the uh, the coaching on uh, on how to get that uh, how to get that weld done. <laughs>